my granddaughter says, where are you at? Where yeah. are you at? Nadia, where are you at? I'm in my office in my house in Denver, Colorado. I have, let's see, what do I have here? This is a Ziggy Stardust Saint <laughs> candle. Very important. I love that. Here's, here's the photo of me giving um, Gloria Stein that sculpture of a vagina that I had made out of melted down purity rings. Uh, <laughs> it, it was my it was my swords and the plowshares moment. I okay. Okay. I'm gonna show you one thing that's in my office yeah, in yeah. New Jersey. Good. I'm in my office in New Jersey. I've got grandbabies here, but really what I want you to see is this crazy thing. Do you see this? Oh isn't that cool? That's amazing. I am, I am an Auburn senior fellow, and my nickname is Storm. So that's me as Storm, and I'm feeling pretty <laughs> stormy today. Yeah, I'm pretty, yeah, pretty stormy. Yeah, that's exactly. great. Yeah, that's great. All right, friends, we're, we're glad you're here. And um, Irving, California, yay, fantastic. Um, Bel Air, Maryland, Portland, Maine. Thank you for coming all the way from Oregon and Alberta, Canada. Lynn, cool. Ensign, en, en, Encinitas, California as well. Well, listen, Nadia and I are here today to have a conversation about the stuff. Um, I, I will just start off by saying that it has been a rough few days in my feed. Um, bullet laden dead bodies on the ground and stories of a boy shot in the head for ringing the wrong do doorbell and another story of a young woman, 20 year old woman shot up in the wrong driveway. I've heard stories of in Harlem, uh, Nadia of men shooting each other across the car way and the kids just didn't get out of school, thank God five minutes later, or they'd have been caught in the crossfire. And another story of two men shooting at each other and their daughters getting shot in the backseat of a car. Nadia, it's like damn wild, wild west out here with the guns and the uh, toxic masculinity and the whose thing is biggerness and all the horribleness that's causing the violence. I wonder how you're doing with the state of the world and um, let's talk about it. Yeah. Well, first of all, I I really limit the amount of time that I'm taking in information online. So um, I, I had this thing about a year ago where I decided, maybe a year and a half, that I really wanted my view of myself and others in the world to be more influenced by my life than influenced mm -hmm. by things like Online. I still need to know what's going out on in the world outside of my life, but um, I I realized that everything was skewed because of what I was seeing online. And, and like I've I've written before, our psyches weren't really developed to hold all of that. Our psyches were developed to be able to hold the the suffering and the violence and the tragedy in our village. So, you know, a baby born today is biologically identical to a baby born during the Ice Age, right? Human beings have certain yeah. hardware. It's not changed, right. right? And yet, our world has changed tremendously, and especially the amount of information that we have access to. Because now we have, it, we have access to not just information, but images of every tragedy, injustice, act of violence that happens to every person across the globe every minute of the day. What? We have to like realize and caretake ourselves enough to know that the human psyche wasn't really wired to be able to, to hold that. So I tried to limit my amount, the amount I see online. Um, now, having said that, um, I, I, the story I wanted to tell you, I have a couple of things I wanted to talk about. One is that um, when you're an American who's doing book events and speaking, um, like in Europe especially, um, there's a point where you get the questions. And it feels like this moment where they're like, all right, we got an American, we got to ask for the questions, right? And um, 
And they're always the same, Jackie, um, because these other so-called Western developed countries that are culturally similar to ours in so many ways have a few things that they find baffling, okay? Like that they, they're like, can you help us understand? And you could probably intuit what they are. There's three and they're related. One is our gun laws, okay? Two is the number of our citizens incarcerated. And three is the death penalty. So these are the three things that they go, can you help us understand? Because it's madness, madness to people in other countries. They, do, they, they see here are the number of, of gun related deaths in our country per capita. Here's the number of your gun. It's not ideology. It's math. And so they're math. looking at that and they're going, can you explain it? And while you're doing that, can you explain why so many of your citizens uh, are incarcerated? And also how in the world does the state see fit to kill them? So um, these are the things that they just cannot wrap their minds around. And for the last 10 years, when as I've been doing that work and getting these questions, I've just said, there's no way to understand why without talking about white supremacy. There's no way to do it. You cannot understand because the reason when there's something, when you have a spiritual malady in a country like we do, that goes unrepented, unaddressed, um, hidden, that will rear its head through powers and principalities. And that's what we're seeing in our news feeds and, and in my work in prisons, I'm seeing powers and principalities at work. And so when, I mean, in like the super, in the most basic way, I think when you, and I know that there are people in this country who want to pretend this is not our story because it's too painful, but when your country is really founded on um, race-based chattel slavery, and genocide and land theft when that's sort of what you built you live in a castle and that's what you built the castle on on some level you kind of know it right in your gut you kind of know that you you built this castle by some fucking um illegitimate means okay on some level even if you don't admit it psychically you kind of feel it and what yeah. happens when you when you think I have we I have all this power and land and property I have all this wealth I I can leverage all of it I built all this castle but I know it's by illegitimate means but I don't want to admit it and psychically it's kind of tearing me apart and I'm filled with fear what do I do I need to be able to defend it right I and I like the way that's what it is I have to defend it that's right. Yeah. That's right. And specifically, I have to defend it against people who uh, look like the people I stole it from on some level, right? It, I, I'm, I'm saying this is fully conscious. This is the subconscious in our country. And so, and I need to have a system because I've developed so much fear. Uh, I have so much fear about the people who look like the people who I stole the shit from that um, I need to have a system in place where as many of those can be warehoused as possible. And if I really feel like it, I'm going to need to be able to kill them and have it be state, right. state sanctioned. So, I mean, that's yeah. what, when I have over the years, when I've kind of gone on this little rant, uh, when I do it in the States, it gets real quiet. <sighs> They will have been on my bus the whole time, the whole night. We love you. They're laughing. They're crying. They're repenting. You know, all these things when I'm on stage. And then I say this, and it gets real quiet. And it gets real quiet because the truth is the truth will set you free, but first it might fuck you up. Excuse my language. But the truth might fuck you up first, right? What you said, Nadia, is so true historically, true sociologically, true psychodynamically, right? True theologically, true experientially. It's so true. 
I just want to slow it down a second yeah. because it is so true that people, I want them to hear it again. I just want them to hear again. Here, here I'm going to say what Natty said, Jackie's verse, boy, version, same thing, shit, right? You people, y'all English landowning kind of folks who didn't have as much as the monarchy, but had a lot. This is history simplified. Had a lot, but felt oppressed, not enough power, not as much power. I got to go to a place where I can exercise my power. I'm, I need power. I need power that belongs to me, that is mine to have, because I'm a wealthy Anglo-Saxon landowner. I'm going to get over to the new land, blessed by the Pope, the papal bulls, the doctrine of discovery across Great Britain, Portuguese, Spain, pick a, pick a people mm -hmm. and go and be blessed to go and take, take that space for mine because I need freedom, I need space and, and be rewarded to convert, subdue, pick a word, the people who live there that are heathens so take the land, steal the land, genocide the people, take the other, take the black dark bodies off African shore and build the world on those bodies in the name of freedom, Nadia. That's what makes me nauseous. In the name of liberty and freedom and justice and stuff. That's what we did. And then, and then treaties with indigenous people broken, um, treaties with land that was your to give, Mexico, just whatever draw lines in the sand and fight to the death to keep the lines in the sand and continue to keep those people out of their land that was their land with the Rio Grande. I mean, and, and, and yes, they built this nation with all of that animus, hatred, bias, prejudice, power hungry, bloodthirstiness. And the only way to keep it is to sit on the people. And when the Emancipation Proclamation happens and you have reconstruction, we're gonna lynch you to get you back in control, create loopholes with the 14th Amendment to keep you back in control, imprison you, and yes, Nadia, kill some of you to teach the rest of you how to stand down. Did you ever see the movie Castle? Yeah. Um, John Gandolfino and Robert Redford, like people, y'all, this movie is exactly what Natalie and I are talking about. It takes place in a prison. Here's the castle. Here's the white overlord, overseer, managing the brown and black people with the prison industrial complex um, and, and the right to have guns because the second amendment guarantees the right to take your musket or your gun and recapture your slaves. Y'all, these are facts. These are historic facts. These are sociological, historic facts, psychological truths, theological truths that America is built to do what it do and is doing what it do. So uh, here's, here's the other thing I wanted to say about it, and which is um, my, my nephew was shot and killed a year and a half ago, 23 years old. And if it if he had lived in another country, he would still be alive. And um, I don't want to go into the details of of his death, um, but uh, what I it was a stand your it was a stand your ground thing. So the person who killed him, uh, the law was justified. My nephew was unarmed and um, just needed um, some mental health help. But um, okay, here's what I want to say about. <laughs> about guns is that the reason that I am opposed to guns is not because I'm some really good peace loving person who is appalled that anybody would ever use one. I'm opposed to guns because I have an anger issue, because I have strong resentments. I have been I have experienced clinical depression in my life. I've had very low points. And at none of those times should I have a lethal weapon within my grasp. Yeah. That's why. I hate because if somebody broke into my house and I had a handgun and I would be so terrified, do I think that my goodness and passive 
you know, my passivity uh, would keep me from shooting them? No, it would not. I would kill somebody if I had a le if I had an item I could put in my hand that was immediately lethal. That's why I don't think that they should be around because I don't think I'm that different from everyone else. And one of the reasons that guns here's the here's the here's an aspect of why guns are lethal. It's not just the bullet goes really fast and it's very quick and you can kill someone. The reason they're lethal in this country specifically is because anybody could be armed so the fact is is that anybody who i find threatening i actually think they might kill me because they could because so many people have guns so when when we have that many guns guns be become more lethal because you think my life is in danger and i better kill them and so it, there is there is that within the human being so I don't think that there's, I don't think there's special categories of people. I just don't. I think human beings struggle with, um, with uh, resentment, with anger, with jealousy, with rage, with like, it's just fear. With, fear. with fear, with, yeah. with um, xenophobia, you know, I mean, we, we, it's just part of being a human being. And when I was in, when I was growing up in the fundamentalist church I grew up in, there were a lot of rules. Uh, and we were told that God gave us these rules because God loves us and wants us to be happy. Now, it might seem like following the Ten Commandments plus a bunch of shit the church just made up, uh, it, it would seem like that you're not having as much fun as everyone, but this is God's plan for our lives as humans. God loves us and wants us to be happy. That's why God gave us a, a particular way to live. And then I go to Lutheran seminary and they're like, bullshit. The 10 commandments aren't about the fact that God loves you and wants you to be happy. The 10 commandments are about God loves your neighbor and wants to protect them from you. I love that's, that. That's, that's what it is, that's, right? That's and so yep. in that's every great. human society, there's, um, I wish I could remember the name of the book. I was talking to Sebastian Junger, uh, yeah. who is uh, done a lot of embedded journalism and he has a he has a background in anthropology and he was saying that he wrote the foreword to this book from this other anthropologist that said if you take any big group of human beings and you ask them certain questions about basically their innate worldview their wiring in terms of seeing them themselves in the world and others uh, about half of them will have the type of innate worldview and wiring that where they're really concerned about things that are kind of uh, threatening or dangerous uh, within the group, like within their own society, people not getting enough, too much violence, stuff like that. And about half will think about threats from the outside coming in. <laughs> now, basically, that's saying about every human group will have half that are kind of wired to think as we would say as a liberal and about half will be wired to think as we would say as a conservative okay and every society needs both every society in order to function well we need people who are thinking about how are things going among each other like how can we make sure people aren't left out right that that things are fair all of that and then about half the people to think, how do we protect ourselves from outside threats? So I, I don't like it when we sort of divvy ourselves up too much and go, we're the good guys and they're the horrible ones. I just think that because of the powers and principalities in this country and because of the stuff with our history, the people who have that, we have to protect ourselves from outside threats um, have a lethality to them that is not necessary. So what I wish we could do to people who are so committed to that is saying, what is another way that we could have you protect yourself and protect your communities that doesn't involve, doesn't yeah. involve firearms? So to honor the fact that that's how they're wired, but to say there has to be a way for that to be done uh, in a way that we are not, we don't have 50,000 of our, of other citizens in our country dying. And the 
The other thing I feel like doesn't get talked about enough with the gun stuff is last year, 24,000 people committed suicide by a gun. That's right. 24,000 people. Now, I don't want to get too into the psychology of that, but I just know precious beloved people in my life who were who really had a suicidal ideation for a period and they got some help and it passed. And it, because they didn't have the quick access to the Exactly. That's what you love. Yeah, exactly. Love. So many of my beloveds could still be here. Would there not be such an easy access to the guns? Nadia, everything you're saying resonates so deeply with me about also the kind of uh, uh, wired, the human wiring to care about this and to care about this, to love this and to love that, that we need both. Mm -hmm. And I just want to introduce, because we know that's underneath it also, is this kind of idea that the protect thing, if the protect thing is laden with, laced with powers and principalities that are also about racism, white supremacy, white supremacist ideologies, you know, xenophobia, anti-Jewish, anti-Muslim, anti-queer, anti-women, our us is this, right? Our us our us isn't humankind. Our us isn't can all the people flourish. Our us isn't located in Ubuntu. I right. am who I am because you are who you are. Our us is clan, tribal, who looks like me, who sounds like me, who lives behind my gate, who lives on my block, and the human care for each other. Nadia, which we both know is hardwired in as well, right? When the storms come, when you're when the when the levees break, everybody is. To get, get the bags, pull them out of the water. And we, we understand that we're connected, right? The, the asteroid's coming. Build, let's build some shit. You know, let's go. But if the if this right here, the peoplehood, the planethood, gets cut down to the five people who agree with me, right? Right? And the six who scare, share my skin tone and my theology, that shit is lethal as well. Like then the enemy is so everybody that's not you, right? So you're armed to the teeth to protect your people, but your people are five or 20 or a hundred that are just like you. That scares the shit out of me, the way that there is so much, like you and I, for our work, we have to listen to the thing. Love, there's so much, I'm not you. There's so much hatred. There's so much just fucking rage at the one who's not like you everywhere. Israel, Palestine, Chicago, South Side, North Side, everywhere. The enmity is so scary to me. But to go back to the what I was talking about at the beginning, I, I think so much of it, the dial has been turned up on both sides of the ideological spectrum artificially uh mm -hmm. really like stoking the fear on both sides mm -hmm. of our political spectrum and yeah. other and yeah. uh i mean and i want to talk about this when we're in new york next yes. week is that um there was a there was a cover story in the new york times in september about how russian trolls um targeted the women's march and they mm, yeah. created all these accounts to um, sow division and suspicion uh, within that movement. And they were effective. And they were effective. They were. And so there are certain human sins that we have within us and um, where that are a national security issue because um, the, the people who want it, they know they can't touch this country militarily, but they can destroy it from the inside. And they find these little pressure points and then they create all these social media accounts and they turn the ideological uh, dial up one notch at a time. And then that's the baseline and everyone's more outraged and more afraid and more pointing fingers. And we have been manipulated. So there, you know, these things within us that 
can be a problem, um, the people who want to destroy us are very aware of what those are and they know <laughs> how to manipulate them. So, um, I mean, I feel like I'm sounding a little tinfoil hat-ish right now. But the other thing is I want people to know there's a national action in Denver, June 5th. There is a, June 5th, there is people from all over the country on June 5th are coming to Denver to, um, to have a rally where we are saying we want to actually ban guns and buy them back. This incremental thing that we keep doing, oh, we'll just try and maybe ban this one type of assault weapon. We're fucking sick of it and our kids are dying. And so we're sort of going, all right, listen, we're going to actually come together, tens of thousands of people in Denver all from all over the country, uh, June 5th. I think it's called For the Kids. Um, I'm going to try to get there. Well, that's great. I'm going to ask uh, when we put this back out in the world, we'll put that link in to this talk so people can try to come and be with us. And Nadia and I are going to be together talking all the good things at the end of April here in New York, uh, April 28 to 30, with a cast of amazing colleagues who look different and are different and think different and have different disciplines, but are all working to make a better world with fierce love. Nadia, I don't think a half hour is enough time for us to get this on. This is not, we need like six hours. <laughs> but I do want to tell you, love, um, that your words in the world uh, inspire me and teach me and give me hope, give me so much hope. Um, tell folks where your substack, the, the Oh, am I, it's at the, I mostly am online at uh, the corners dot substack. So um, yeah, people can find me there. All my sermons and my essays are up there. So I appreciate what you're doing in the prisons. I appreciate what you're doing in the world. And I can't wait to see you at the end of the I can't week. wait to see you next week. Another week. I know. Thank you, Nadia Bolts Weber. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Share this as you see it. And blessings to y'all. Okay. Take care. Bye.